Boom, we're breaking down my daily render, the jawbreaker. Let's get into it. I originally wanted to do a product animation. Unfortunately, once I got this done and set up, it was taking like four minutes to render frame at 200 samples, which wasn't even enough to do anything. So I basically had to scratch the animation. So basically here is the file. It was kind of rough for me again here eight-year-old laptop it kept crashing on me a couple of times and i think it had to do with these instances i made even though instances are supposed to be lighter on your system it kind of made my system a little bit wonky like things were crashing which i normally don't crash too often but this after i started building these instances out it started crashing kind of crazy i'll show you guys the video that how i learned how to do this kind of shrink wrap this video here had popped up in my stream vacuum vacuuming a package vacuuming packing so so i ended up jumping on this and this was the channel it came from usc studios so that was how i basically simulated and did this whole project and then my lighting setup fairly simple here i've got one big light here off to the side this big soft box off to the side and then i had another light here my major key light which was at, at about 75 percent this guy was at about 50 percent and then behind it i had this octane area fear light right here behind it and that was able to to get this glow back behind here make sure the opacity on the light was set to uh, zero so you don't actually see it visibly but you can see the light emitting onto the backdrop and again i had that side light kicking from this way my main key light kicking from this way and my hdri was like at point to very 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 low and subtle but what really set this off was making the packaging which i really enjoyed and i quickly show you the photoshop file how i made this packaging so what i did inside of blender i went into my front view exported out a uv image which i'll show you guys how to do it's really easy exported that out and this basically is what it gave me it gave me a png so this is allows me to go ahead it's like a template i can build up my material or my texture however i want and i know where everything's going to be so from here i literally threw on a background this was the color that i want it to be and then i was like all right you know i just started i just started building on top of this but this is what i had i built this out and now what i would do is save this and bring it back in as a texture the most important thing though when you're doing this you need to make sure you turn off this this layer right here because it will show up in your render so i will just turn that off and then boom this is what i had but i wanted to have it separate i wanted to have the jawbreaker on the plastic so this needed to be its own image this area here in the back was going to be the backing so again i had to come up in here and i literally had to just turn off the jawbreaker material and just render out this this will be my background label and for the material for the plastic i will just render just this because everything's going to be transparent this is going to be the logo on top i'll show you guys how we set that up inside of blender and then that was it but I also wanted to have this little blue area here. I wanted it to be chrome. I wanted it to have its own material. So again, you need to make a max for that. So what I ended up doing was duplicating it. I duplicate it, put this white, and then changed it to black. For some reason in Octane, it's reversed. Like I did it originally the first time I had the text black and I had the outline white because that reveals. But for some reason it, in Octane, it flips it. I don't know what's the deal, but I don't know, whatever. So all I did was come back into Photoshop I changed this to white and I changed that to black. And now wherever it's black, the chrome layer will share show through. Let me go ahead and show you guys how we set that up in Blender. Okay, so back inside in Blender here, let me first show you how to export out if you wanted to make something of your own, like an own texture. It's very easy. Bring up the UV editor workspace. And then what I did was before I started anim uh, moving and positioning everything and doing the composition, all I do is go into the front view or whatever view you want i went into front view make sure you're in ortho right and this was like a straight on shot and then what i would do is click into edit select the faces that i wanted and in this case i actually selected all faces but this is just to quickly show you i right clicked and i went to unwrap project from view so it's going to be a straight on shot project from view after i did that i came into here and then i went export uv layout and it's gonna basically export this as a PNG file. Boom, that was it. And then you saw the process inside of Photoshop, super easy. Now, once we're finished with that, we need to bring that image back in. It's a very simple setup. Here is the RGB node. This is the backing, the, the image that I brought in from Photoshop that I made. 
is using an RGB image node plugged into a diffuse glossy node because I wanted to have a little bit of shininess for the packaging. And again, setting it to GGX Energy Preserve. You can dial in whatever settings you want on there. And then from there, I take a mix material node. This mix material node allows me to mix materials. And I got a second material here, the pink. And this is something I just learned. This is another note called polysize. And what it allows me to do, it allows me to give a front and a back to an image. So if you had a playing card and you wanted to have one material on the one side and one material on the other side, you use this poly side. So here was the main, here's my main plastic material. Again, using the free material that I gave you guys earlier, plastic going into a mixed material and I'm mixing it with another clear, uh, not clear, but more of a glossy material. But this is what I'm using for the label on the plastic. And what I do is the RGB image. This is the Photoshop image of the Jawbreaker logo. And then down here at the bottom, which I accidentally unplugged, this is an alpha image. And it's the same thing, but it's only taking the black and white values. And that's allowing me to basically cut the transparency around it. Let me quickly show you what it looks like. I was going to show you guys, but my laptop is seriously lagging. I can't even move my mouse. It's like, wait, like this. It's just not going to happen, unfortunately. So, you know, that's one thing too, guys. Like, I'm not letting the lack of speed, the, the my old laptop stop me from making content. Like, I like doing 3D work. I like making stuff. My laptop is old. My GPU is old. And like it struggles it just for me to do these renders it struggles but that's not gonna stop me from sharing one sharing the knowledge that i'm learning from using blender octane to share it with you guys it's just i have to make you know, i have to compromise and like right now i wanted to show you guys what it looked like while while it was rendering and but it's just not gonna happen so you just gotta have to kind of trust me <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sorry guys, excuse me, sorry. The alpha image only does black and white images, or at least it converts your image to a black and white. And I'm using that as an alpha to cut it out. And then I duplicate this and again, mix it here with the mixed material node. So it's like cutting that away. So at least you have just the logo left on top of the plastic. Then that's how I'm able to cut this out and just have this sitting on top of the plastic. But next, I wanted to do the foil. You can see I have just on the edge around here, it was supposed to be just the foil. So the next way we did that was here again, here's the plastic and here's the alpha cutter that's cutting out this image down here, the image of the Jawbreaker logo, mixing them out. And then I go to the output, but now I wanna add the foil. So to do the foil, add another mix node in here. Let me plug that into there. And we take this, what we already have, we put that into input one, into render one. And on the bottom, you select the material that I want. I want foil, I want that, that metallic material, mixing into the second input. I'm using the special one that I made, the one that was black, that was white text and black image. This is where it goes plugged into here. And then that cuts it out again. And then that basically allows me to have just the edge here around there on the side there for you those of you guys who stayed to this part into the video um this little jawbreaker like material i made which was kind of a first again for me trying to to mix multiple colors that are all spread out and you know like looking like a jawbreaker pattern basically this was kind of the setup that i did for that you can download this for free at the github go through it play with it figure out how to do it i have a video that comes along with that just walk through what all of this is and how what each node is kind of doing again it'll only be available for blender octane because i got to support my octane family hope you guys enjoy patrick lavar keep filming i mean keep filming that's my other channel keep rendering it's the only way you'll get better catch you guys in the next video peace